Well, we are so excited here. Um, Paul Falcone and I are here um, in Cambridge with Wellesley Media, um, and we're interviewing Anjali Nath, who is um, our very famous dance teacher that we're talking to, and we're gonna ask her all about her inspirational and amazing dance style and concept. So I'm gonna let you take it away. Tell me all about what is it that you do? <laughs> Thank you for having me here. Uh, I would not say I'm famous at all, <laughs> but I am very fortunate to have been doing a dance style called Kathak, and it's a classical Indian dance style from the northern region of India, and I had no idea what that was until 20, six years ago when I stumbled into a dance class with Gretchen Hayden, who is based here now in Chandika, but who studied with my Guruji, Pandit Chitresh Das. And so I have been studying this art form for the past 26 years and um, started here in Boston, started at college at Tufts University and then made my way after six years. Um, actually, we did a lot of our classes right here in the dance complex and made my way over to California to go study directly with Guruji and now I'm back as of the past 13 years or so I'm teaching traditional classical Kathak dance at the dance complex regularly once a week um, and then these dedicated students join me for an additional class a week so they're getting extra training and really kind of showing their dedication to it and I've been invited by institutions like Harvard um, through their dance center to teach regularly, as well as some of the private schools in the area. And so I've just been really fortunate. Right. And, and busy, it looks and like. And very busy. <laughs> and tell me, tell me about some of the really um, um, interesting um, styles or aspects of this particular dance form. Mm -hmm. So each of the eight classical styles from India have very unique characteristics. And um, Speaking for Kathak, I would say there are, I was taught that there are four key elements. Uh, tayari, which is your readiness and your technique, uh, which really requires that deep, rigorous practice or sadhana. Um, layakari is your deep understanding of rhythm and your ability to then play with that rhythm. So then here we get into that word play, which is kind of underlying the theme of what's coming up for us next. And then, um, Khubsurti, which is beauty, which can be beauty in movement and movement, grace, um, uh, body line, etc., uh, just in the feeling of the dance, and then nazakat, which is the subtlety. So it can be the subtlety of the movements of the wrist or the neck and the eyes and the eyebrows, and um, just those little subtleties that come out. So whereas some of the other dance styles are more structured and you know where your eyes go, where to look. Kathak is a little more fluid and natural. And so what I love about our training is that we were never trained to be cookie cutter dancers. We were trained with the same material, but each dancer was encouraged and supported to flourish in their own way through their own strengths. And then I, I hear there's a big performance coming up on June 1st. Yes. And so tell, tell us a little bit about that and why that's so awesome. It is very awesome. <laughs> so um, I had the wonderful and rare opportunity to um, be able to bring two of our musical colleagues from India with the support of my guru sisters across the country. So I'll be dancing solo, um, some of the traditional elements of a solo concert, uh, which include an invitation, it includes um, exploration of a given thal or rhythm structure, and storytelling. June 1st, what we're putting on is a production called Kelna, which means to play. And so playing can come in many forms, but playing through Kathak is what I'm hoping people can see because it is quite the discipline. But one, uh, one thing my Guruji used to say is freedom comes from uh, refined discipline with responsibility. And that phrase has stuck in my mind for so long, but I, I think every day, every year, <laughs> I really explore what on what that means to me because I'm not t a terribly disciplined person <laughs> um, and I love this art form and but to really have the discipline to maintain a solid practice that would just be maintenance and then to go deeper into your practice is where you get to connect that art with yourself and vice versa and find your own voice in your art 
and then you get to start to play. And there's a concept called upaj, which means improvise, and that's the heart of kathak. It literally means uh, the heart of kathak. And so to be able to do that, you need to be so steeped in your tradition, whatever it is, whatever your form or your craft is, that you can improvise. Uh, so I think any artist can relate to that. Any entrepreneur can relate to that. Anyone who creates anything can relate to that. But uh, so that idea that once you've done your hard work or as you do your hard work, that you can still be playful. And um, sometimes you get to a point in your career where you feel like it doesn't feel very fun anymore. <laughs> and where did the fun go? And you're kind of hard on yourself sometimes and you expect yourself to create bigger and better and to a, up to a certain standard. And then that playfulness can go away. And so I really wanted um, this theme of play to come back into my own life. Um, I'm surrounded by people who've been through hard things in their lives and they always find a way to play. Right. And I just have been inspired by people like that, which includes my mom, my dad, um, many people who are close to me in my life, um, people that we don't know, but we know are going through so much uh, all around the world and where we can still see the joy and the, just that basic desire for playfulness coming through. And so I just wanted to honor that spirit and see what I could do through right. the dance. Um, so what made you decide to transition from um, being a student to being a teacher? You know, it didn't actually happen as a transition. It just happens. I think even these students who are here, they're all pretty new. The, um, the one that's been studying the longest sitting in this room has been studying for a year, at least with me, and others have had other Kathak training. Um, but the way I teach is the way I feel like I learned. And the second you learn something, it's yours to understand and to absorb and to embody. And to me, that means once you have something, then you should be able to teach it to somebody else. And so the learning and the teaching went hand in hand from day one. And I think what I have learned in these 26 years is your learning is amplified exponentially when you teach. So even if someone walks into this room as a new student, <clears throat> actually, right, we have a new student sitting here and I've asked some of the other students who've just been here a little longer to please guide that person if I'm a little late or I just need to work with someone else and that they should be able to do that. And I've told them very explicitly that that's what I aim for, that they should be able to just stand in front of anyone as a kataka. A kataka is a storyteller and you should be able to show, explain, understand, demonstrate what, what yeah, it is we, you know. We saw some of that today. So your, yes. your student here did a great job leading. So it was awesome. There you go. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about, about our upcoming June 1st performance exhibit? Yes. Showcase event? <laughs> so uh, June 1st is a proper full concert. So we have a nice big hall to fill and we're really hoping to bring the community together. I've already, um, we have, our students are bringing their communities. Um, we have a really, I'm very grateful that even my community of fellow artists are actually planning to be there and um, I would love the community to just come out and if you know Kathak or you think you know what Kathak is or you think you know what Indian dance is or you have no idea, I just would love people to come, take a chance, explore what it is and just have fun. I'm hoping that through the fun we hope to have on stage and in the space together that right. we'll be able to sort of infuse that into the audience members and that they can take that and do whatever they will with that in their respective lives, their families, their crafts, uh, their hearts, etc. So yeah. And where, where do we get tickets? So you can go online. Uh, they can either go to my website which is just anjali-nath.com and otherwise it's on Eventbrite. If you search Kelna Katak Boston, I'm sure you'll find it. But um, we are, yes, we're, right. we've tried to make it easy for people. Right. So in addition to that concert, we actually, because we get to host the musicians for a week, we are turning this week into a bit of a festival of play. Right. And so um, there will be workshops and classes focused both on music and dance and movement um, starting Tuesday, May 28th, right here at the dance complex um, at this time, 6.30 to 8 p.m., and all the way through Sunday. So 
other than the concert day, we're actually going to be having workshops every single evening uh, during the weekdays and then on Sunday afternoon. Awesome. So lots of opportunity, lots of opportunity for all ages, all levels, all interests to come and you can just sit and absorb it all. You can be an observer, you can participate. If you love rhythm, you love math, you love history, um, you're going to get it all. <laughs> it's all a part of these art forms, but just really seeing the interplay between dance and music um, and where play comes in with each of these um, traditions, the tabla tradition, the sitar tradition, the, the kathak tradition, because kathak you can't actually do without these musicians. Right. We can, and I've been trained that way, and you're going to see uh, something that my Guruji developed, which he called kathak yoga where we are singing and dancing and reciting and playing an instrument by ourselves. And that really was meant not for the stage, it's meant for one's own practice. And they are learning that from day one or two and confused as anything initially, but sometimes you don't have to think too much. It's amazing what we can do when we don't think too much. Um, and when you do your work and you, you're going through the, the muck of it, trying to reconcile two things that feel very uh, dissonant or disjointed or disconnected and when you find that resonance and how it can come together so beautifully that's where the fun starts the source of joy source of joy and you're passing the joy forward yeah so congratulations <laughs> thank you so this much it's been amazing thank you thanks for having me Yeah, my name's Ishani and I have been studying with Anjali Didi for about a year now and I, I mean in the beginning I had known I would wanted to pursue a classical form, an Indian classical form of dance but I was so like busy with school I didn't know um, where to go. I was in a, a very remote area and then after graduating college I moved to the Boston area and then I found Anjali Didi's classes and I was really excited to explore this new opportunity and in sticking with her for a year it's been one of like the most the biggest highlight of this year just uh, being able to immerse myself in Kathak dance and it's taught me a lot about just my body awareness musicality discipline just everything uh, it's definitely impacted my life in a very big way, so I'm very excited to continue. So tell me something that you learned about yourself um, that you didn't know when you first started versus something that you know now through this form. Yeah, um, I would say it's definitely uh, one of those things where like it calms your mind, uh, like wherever you were before you entered that room, inter entered the room in which you're going to practice, all of those problems like stay outside and Anjali Didi is also very um, clear about this like when you enter a room like you leave all that stuff behind you and you come in and you dance and it's allowed me just in my life also to like separate all of the things and just focus on the task in front of me and put all of my like mind and body into that task completely and I think that's really cool. And do you like your fellow students? I love my fellow students. <laughs> I love them, yes. <laughs> Yeah, they have been um, a great community here, especially like I'm still very new to the Boston area, so I've been able to rely on them just as a form of community. We've been able to hang out outside of practice, and now we're all working together to put on uh, this production and help Anjali Didi with everything, and it's been so great to just get to know them and have a community in Boston. So, so you're excited for June 1st? I'm so excited. Everyone should buy tickets, yes. Are you, are you participating in the week-long lead-up? I will be helping to plan. I'll be working backstage and doing whatever is needed to be done. Um, I'm just here to support you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay.